guests today. Uh, there was a bunch of us from the, the parish that were at the uh, retreat in Hamilton, and we heard Father Demetrius Carella speak. And he mentioned something that uh, St. Gregory of Georgia, a recent saint of the 20th century, uh, he's also known as a fool for Christ. He said, if we really understood what was happening in the liturgy, at the end of the service, we would wipe our hands on the dust of the floor and wipe it on our faces. It's such a mystery, and I, I can testify that the older I get, and the more that God has allowed me to celebrate the mystery, it really is the most wonderful, wonderful thing. It really is. So today, on the fifth Sunday of one uh, great Lent, we have for many, um, what should we talk about? Mary, the mother of Egypt, or the wonderful gospel? And uh, so I'm, I'm preaching on the gospel, and uh, we heard the life of Mary this past Thursday beautifully read for us, and her story is so amazing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In today's Gospel section from Mark's Gospel, we hear about an incident in the life of the disciples that certainly doesn't speak well for them. It is a request of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, to have places of honor at Jesus' right and on his left when he comes into the kingdom. As they were currently on their way up to Jerusalem, it seems that the disciples were thinking that his kingdom was soon to be established, and they wanted to be first, making their request known. In Matthew's Gospel, this request is made by Salome, the mother of James and John. But Mark only tells us of James and John making this request by themselves. It seems most likely that they formed a group of three in making their request. Tradition tells us that Salome was the half-sister of our Lord, being the daughter of Joseph, the betrothed, and she was a close friend of Mary, the Theotokos. Salome was also one of the group of women who followed after Jesus and provided for him out of their own means. As well, Salome was one of the murdering women. It seems that James and John were hoping that their close family ties with Jesus, in addition to the actions of their mother, would make their request entirely reasonable, especially if you are thinking of only the original twelve disciples. But Jesus tells them these positions are not his to give, they will be given to those for whom they have been prepared. And when we look at every Orthodox iconostas, we see the ones whom God, it seems, had in mind. On our Lord's right is the woman honored above all women, and on our Lord's left is the greatest of all the prophets. But the request shows the complete failure of the three to really understand the nature of our Lord's kingship. When he mentions the cross and the suffering that will come to them, they readily agree, yes, Lord, we are able to be baptized with the same baptism you have, and to, we will be able to drink of the same cup. They fail to understand the nature of the agony and death that our Christ will be submerged into, and they think they will be able to drink his cup, but they do not understand the shame and humiliation that will be found in this cup. Of course, James and John indeed share our Lord's death, and they will suffer martyrdom, but now they really have no understanding of what our Lord is speaking of. They did not understand the nature of the cross that must come to every true believer. But did not a sword pierce through the heart and soul of the blessed Theotokos as she stood at the foot of the cross? Did she not suffer shame and humiliation? And what of John the forerunner? He was falsely imprisoned for speaking the truth about Herod's adultery and he found a martyr's death. They are on the right and the left of our Lord, and they indeed shared his baptism and drank from his cup. 
The other disciples really do not have any more of the understanding of the nature of our Lord's kingdom, for when they learn of the request, there is outright anger and indignation. Just as today, people get outraged when they think that a position might have be been or was granted for no other reason than one's blood ties to another or because of services rendered. And so our Lord must put all things right. St. John Chrysostom tells us how our Lord uses this in incident to teach his disciples and also we ourselves in a gracious and loving manner how things really stand in the kingdom of heaven. First, he calls the disciples to himself and he corrects them in a loving way. He points out how the rulers of this world, the unbelieving Gentiles, how they act over against the people that they rule for the kings of this world are always about making sure that they're in first place and that they are receiving the honors and the awards. And there is such a push for this kind of thing. They are angry and feel themselves slighted if their slightest little contribution is overlooked. I recently noted as we were driving down the streets, somebody had a bumper sticker on their car that said, if you are not first, you are last. And that's pretty much the attitude of the hoi polloi. If you're not first, you are last. But this is a passion. This is an emotion that has taken over and rules one's thinking. This is a passion to always be noticed, to always have pride of place, to always be thanked and worthy of praise by other people. It is a passion that must be turned from and rejected. True greatness in the kingdom of heaven, our Lord says, is to seek to be the servant of all. Jesus warns his disciples, you are not to give in to this dreadful passion for first place. You are not to let this desire to have everyone notice you and commend you for your work and efforts. Because this passion, if it's allowed to exist, will bring others in its train. So then you soon will be angry and resentful and feel you have a right to take revenge on those who have deprived you of what you thought was your proper due. Saint Theophon the Recluse says, the evil one delights in causing a great turmoil of thoughts in our heads like a whirlwind and nothing can cause such an uproar in our thinking than the thought that we have been overlooked in our work in our families, even in the church. The true servant of our Lord Jesus Christ seeks the lowliest place. The one who desires entrance into the kingdom does not need to be in the light line, praised and exalted by others. It is enough for the believer that God, the loving, all-powerful, heavenly Father knows. He knows what we have done. And it is enough for us to be his companion and to be aware that God will not overlook our contributions, but he will give us reward. The saints are absolutely insistent that when we bear whatever we need to bear in patient love and we serve others with a love for God, that there will be a blessing in this. And often it's a spiritual blessing, a sense of peace and harmony in oneself that can, you just suddenly realize, this is from God himself. And so this is what we need to do. We need to think, change our thinking. That's what repentance is about. Not groaning over our sins as much as it's changing the way that we think. We're not to be thinking about putting ourselves forward, but seeking the lowest place, serving our God, knowing he cares and he remembers and he will bless us. St. John Chrysostom tells us that the Gospel writers show that before the death and resurrection of our Lord, they didn't understand the kingdom at all. Even at the moment of the ascension, they were still thinking of an earthly kingdom. Yet, after his ascension, after the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the church in Pentecost, we see a radical difference in the way the disciples acted. Is it not significant, St. John tells us, that these men, who before the resurrection were arguing about pride of place and getting indignant with one another as they scrabbled over what they thought
thought should be their own position. After the resurrection, they're getting out of the way to give honor to each other. Peter, James, and John chose James, the half-brother of our Lord, to be the bishop, the first bishop, and have pride of place in Jerusalem. And it is James who speaks at the first church council recorded for us in Acts chapter 15. How different they are after seeing the resurrection of our Lord and having received the Holy Spirit. In the kingdom of heaven, first place comes through lowliest service. Honor comes not through acting like a prince, but in serving others. And is this not what our Lord Jesus Christ has done? He came down from the highest heights of heaven, went all the way down to the lowest places of Hades itself to bring us up and to bring all men into the light of God's grace and mercy. Our Lord laid aside the rich glory of his rule and reign in heaven to be the lowliest servant of all humanity. He bore all shame, all humiliation from the very creatures that he had made in order to restore all of creation into a loving relationship with the living, eternal, and loving Heavenly Father. And this is still the nature of our God. God is still constantly seeking his people, still looking for the lost coin, still looking for the lost sheep. And when the individual believer seeks the Lord, the lowest place, out of love for God and one's neighbor, one finds that one hasn't separated oneself from God at all. It is often in the loneliest place that there we find God 